first of all, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to me. Um, big fan. Um, love Ball Masters. Uh, love Super Jail. That is definitely my jam. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for having me so much. Yeah, absolutely. So we are, of course, talking about um, Ball Masters at Rubicon, which premieres on Adult Swim at midnight, uh, Monday, February 20th, and it'll be streaming the next day. So um, the uh, second season ended in March of 2020. Uh, when were you approached to do the uh, special? I mean, we were kind of bugging them to do the special for a while. And it, again, it was like, I don't know if you remember, but there was all this, uh, a lot of things were shifting, like Lazo, Mike Lazo had left the network and then the the, the merger with AT&T and all that and Time Warner. So things were kind of in, in flux, but uh, finally it all worked out and happened, but, and then COVID happened. <laughs> there were a lot of strange things that happened that, that um we've been working on it a long time, but it's, uh, I'm not describing this right. It, it wasn't like we've been working on it nonstop. It's been a lot of uh, ups and downs, but it ended up uh, coming out great. And I'm just so excited for people to see it. Yeah, uh, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was such a great sort of uh, coda to the um, second season. Um, now, um, I love how this uh, goes full anime. Uh, now, of course, the original series always sort of flirted with uh, that style, but I love how this like fully commits to that. Was that always kind of the plan? Um, the story was always the plan, but the anime thing was not like, I mean, I've, I've worked with Titmouse for years. I love Titmouse, but I'd always wanted to kind of do it as a real anime, but I just, I didn't know how, I didn't know anyone there. I didn't know how to do it. And um, <clears throat> I had a friend, um, Silas Hickey, who, who runs this place, Custom Nuts. And I, I go to animation festivals a lot, like Ottawa and Annecy. And we were talking and I was just, I, I don't even know how it happened. It was something like, man, I, it'd be cool to make it, you know, a real anime. And he's like, oh, I know these studios. He 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 works for Cartoon Network Asia. So we started talking and then talking with Adult Swim and kind of made it happen. And um, it just worked out really good. Because a lot of these studios, I mean, Studio 4C is one of my favorite anime studios ever. Like, I've known them since I was in my 20s, like Mind Game and Tekken Concrete and all these kind of things. And um, uh, it just worked out. They had a, they, they, they had a slot open because these studios are really busy over there and backed up. I don't know if you, how much you know about anime, but it was it was a big deal to be able to work with them. I mean, it was like a it was like an an honor, you know, it was crazy. So Yeah, that's amazing. So I I admit I am an I'm a, a huge novice when it comes to anime, oh. but well the, the animation director for this there was Takashi Nakamura who was the animation director of Akira. Wow, okay. <laughs> it was insane. Like it was it was insane because I was just like, are you kidding me? Is this even I I didn't think it was going to happen to be honest. But it was just a lot of luck, you know? Yeah. And I mean, even again, even as like a self-proclaimed novice, I mean, Akira is legendary. It's, it's yeah, so great. Worked on a lot of crazy stuff from the seventies and the, maybe not sixties, but like, like gold light on like Yatterman. And um, he, he animated on Nausicaa. Like I would never say the name right. Nausicaa, Nausicaa, you know, the Miyazaki movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He's amazing. Um, yeah, now that that's awesome. So was the production time the same uh, or a little bit more than just like an average episode of Ballmasters? It was really different and weird because I've never worked with a studio in Japan and they work really differently. And um, uh, so we wrote it here. Like I wrote it with Andy Royland. He, he wrote on season one and two. And then I storyboarded it here with uh, with Veronica Liu. She worked on season uh I think she worked on season one and two. She definitely worked on season two. I think she worked on one and two, but uh, we storyboarded it here. And um, and then we sent it there. And then I did all the, I didn't do the designs. I did all roughs of the designs and stuff. I post them on my Instagram and stuff, but then they redesigned everything. They did a whole redesign and then they would send it back to us. And like, it was, it was a lot of back and forth on Zoom and stuff. Cause again, it was during COVID. So, you know, we've never even met face to face. It was pretty surreal. Nice. Um... Now, um, speaking of that, um, so with the COVID restrictions, the the voice recordings, was that all done remotely, I guess, as, as far as like just recording it and then? It's kind of like the same because um, most of the voice recording we did in, God, I'm trying to think where everyone was. Some some A lot of people on the show are in LA, a lot mm -hmm. are in New York, and we they, those things were still open. You just wear a mask and stuff. So yeah, that was all pretty much the same. Nice. Now, I know this is rarely the case, but um, do the voice actors ever get to like do their lines together or is it all separate? No, it's always for, for this show. It's always separate, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but that's, I, I think that's just a further credit to your genius because it, it just is so seamless that you would never know that it was just all kind of just put together in a way that just flows really nicely. Yeah. More of their genius, but, but, uh, no, everyone on the show is amazing. I mean, Natasha Leone is amazing. Uh, uh, it's, you know, we got, we got Dave Willis, Dana Snyder, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, Eric Bowser. I mean, Eric Bowser is the voice of Bugs Bunny and almost all the Looney Tunes characters. I mean, he's like an insane Dana, Dana and Eric are pretty, so well, so is Jessica. They're all pretty pro voice people. Jessica was on Adventure Time and stuff. She's in a lot of Disney things. Um, and then Natasha Leone's like, you know, she's like an A-list. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, mean, I feel so lucky she even does the show. Yeah, uh, she's great. Dana's great. Everybody. Uh, and of course, you're great. You know, you do the, um, okay. one of the. <laughs> I had thought of dressing like Krazar for these interviews and then I decided not to. And then, like, oh man. Um so now I'm kind of curious uh because I know a lot of people, a lot of fans are kind of wondering like is the show completely like dead now? Could we see a third season possibly? I mean th the the point of this special is to set up a third season or at least a couple mm -hmm. more specials, so I'm really hoping the network does it. But it, it will depend on the ratings and if people watch. But yeah, like the, this this special really sets up the next phase of the show. Like, I guess this will be a spoiler talk, but the intent was always like, we had the game and I was always like, okay, the first couple seasons will be the game. But the game is really, the game is this big plan of Krazar. He's been lying to everyone. I mean, you saw the, spe did you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Krazar is kind of like a, he's almost like a, like a spoiled trust fund kid that's been like slumming around the universe going to planets and making games and playing around and you know ignoring his duties so when they finally found him you know it's like crazy what have you been doing and they they like this is this is enough you know they're gonna punish him so um um but it sets up that they're gonna have to search for this cosmo diary because the universe is really in trouble and um i think it could be really fun and and cool to to see what happens so so i mean the ending you know, if they never pick it up again, I guess the ending's okay, but it's pretty much a setup for more. So yeah, that's why I asked because it it certainly does kind of leave you with like, okay, I want to see more. I want to see where this is going. So that's that's encouraging because I definitely do want to see, like again, if it's like more another season, another special. Um I'm dying to do more. I mean, I'd love to do a season three, but I but I think I think like a trilogy of specials would be awesome because again, um the original title was going to be Ballmaster's Odyssey, but then mm -hmm. as we were writing it, we were like, well, this is the beginning. They're kind of crossing this threshold, like crossing the Rubicon. So we'll call this Ballmaster's Rubicon. Ballmaster's Odyssey will be the next one. And then I don't know what the last one will be yet, but but they will. I mean, I have a lot of ideas. There was so much stuff we came up with that we didn't use. Because again, mm -hmm. 22 minutes, it goes fast. I mean, it plays pretty quick, I feel like. Yeah, the show is usually eleven minutes. I was worried, like, oh, what if it plays slow? What if what if twenty two is too long for this show? But I, I thought it played pretty pretty clean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the pacing is is brilliant. Like all the episodes. Um, so I have to wrap soon, but um, I was kind of wondering, you know, um, everything's kind of crossover now, right? So, uh, is a super jail bomb masters crossover a possibility? All right, I'm going to tell you a secret. I originally wanted these aliens to be the the people from the twins planet and make it like it was one universe. Uh, and all the other players like, no, this is like Marvel. It's this multiverse crap and all this. And I was like, oh, I always thought it'd be really funny if, what if it was? So maybe, <laughs> maybe in the future. I thought it'd be very cool if the twins show up in this show because they seem like they'd fit in. Yeah. They'd probably like yeah, hang out. Absolutely. Where they are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, like, I hope that happens. Because like I said, I'm such a huge fan of both shows. So cross them over. Why not? Um, I hope, so, I hope uh, Michael Ali is watching this and uh, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're putting it out in the universe. So um, uh, all right. Well, thank you so much um, for talking to me. Uh, again, huge fan. Uh, and everybody can check this out uh, Monday, February 20th. And the next day streaming on HBO Max. Again, loved it. So um, check it out. Thank you so much, Michael.